I'm John Fetterman, and I'm a Democrat, and I'm a progressive. I'm a proud progressive, and I am the four-term mayor of Braddock, Pennsylvania. For those of you unfamiliar with my community, Braddock is where Andrew Carnegie built his first steel mill. It would become a wildly prosperous community. And after the steel mill and the industries and everything went away, it would go on to lose 90% of everything. Today, demographically, it's much like New Orleans' Ninth Ward. 80% African American, overwhelmingly poor. I came to Braddock 17 years ago to dedicate my professional life to fighting against inequality and a lot of entrenched, intractable issues like gun violence, hopelessness, you name it. I started out as a GED program instructor, helping young people get their lives back on order. Three or four years into that process, things were going well, but two of my students were gunned down a couple weeks apart. And I decided right then and there that I, I had to do more, I needed to do more. So I made the improbable choice of running for mayor of that, of that community. And I went around knocking on doors. And I went around knocking on doors with the very young people that were my students. They were the young people that I helped get their GEDs or get a job. And because of their, and only because of their interactions and their word against my character, I won my first election by one single vote. Every vote matters. 13 years later after that election, I'm proud to say Braddock is a lot further along than it ever was. People ask me what I'm most proud of that I've accomplished as mayor. That's easy. We went five and a half years in a row without the loss of life through violence in our community. Of the 13 years I've been mayor, nine have been without the loss of life through violence in my community. I'm proud to say from a progressive standpoint as well, I was the first state official in Pennsylvania to solemnize a same-sex wedding when it was still illegal in 2013 and threatened with legal action for marriage equality. My community did not have a functioning restaurant and today we have four including one that was special enough that it was one of the last places that Anthony Bourdain featured on his show before he left us. With a progressive record like that and fighting for a community, a marginalized, forgotten community like that, I decided in 2015-16 to run for the United States Senate. Now, if you look at me, wherever I go, I've never been mistaken for a public official, <laughs> let alone a candidate for the U.S. Senate. And it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a tough race, and I ran as a proud progressive. I was the only candidate in the entire country to endorse Bernie Sanders for president. I was the only candidate to be for the full legalization of marijuana. In the country. I led with immigration. My wife, Giselle, who's in the audience, a former dreamer, was brought to this country when she was nine, her mother being a dangerous situation. Progressive. The first two commercial, commercials were about my wife's story and the three dozen same-sex weddings that I officiated when I was still breaking the law by solemnizing them. Progressive. Obviously, I didn't prevail. I was outspent 15 to 1, but I got 20% of the vote statewide. That race, that race would go on to cost $175 million the most expensive Senate race in American history. And that brings us to this latest cycle. I am the Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor of my home state of Pennsylvania. And I talk about the same things, whether I'm in Ruby Red Potter County, or whether I'm standing in New Orleans in front of a room of the most progressive activists in the entire country. Because what I believe, what I know to be true, is what I'm going to talk about, regardless of what the audience is. But something happened during the 2016 cycle. 
after Bernie lost, I went around and I campaigned for Hillary. I was proud to do it. And I took some slack for, I took some heat for that. But one thing that I said was is that we have to marshal, everybody has to come together. You cannot sit this one out. You cannot sit this one out. My philosophy is go like 100% for the, your perfect candidate, but then when it's against a Republican and a Democrat, go for the best and the right candidate. You know, Donald Trump won my state by 44,000 votes. And the world was never the same after that. And I'm here to tell you my mission, you know, the man running for governor against my running mate, Governor Wolf in Pennsylvania, said climate change is caused by body heat. <laughs> Not making it up. It's caused by the earth slowly drifting closer to the sun. These are the things that we're up against. Donald Trump is in Pennsylvania right now at a rally in Luzerne County. Donald Trump. Barack Obama carried Luzerne County by 10 points over John McCain in 2008, by five points over Mitt Romney in 2012. Donald Trump carried that county by 20 points in 2016, and that was a key to how he won Pennsylvania. We are building a new coalition in the Democratic Party. We must, and we must reach out to our true base, the young, people of color, women, the marginalized and the forgotten. But I also subscribe that we will, I will leave no voter behind. There are persuadables. There are 67 counties in Pennsylvania, and we're going to go to all of them, every voter. I will meet you wherever you're at ideologically, geographically, and make the case that the Democratic Party is the right party, regardless of where you live and whatever your circumstances are. We, as a party, cannot afford to let what happened in 2016 happen again. My partner, my running mate and I, Governor Wolf and I, have to stop a Scott Wagner. Because if Scott Wagner is elected governor, it all goes away in Pennsylvania. A woman's right to choose, labor's right to organize, public education. And I'm just asking you, is in 2018, we have to have every vote, every vote matters. And we have to get behind the best candidate in some cases. Pennsylvania is a diverse state. There's a lot of different counties and there's a lot of different places. And we will never leave anyone behind. And that's a message that I hope resonates because we have to turn Pennsylvania blue again in 2020. And if we stop Donald Trump in Pennsylvania in 2020, his path to 270 is effectively blocked. Thank you very much for the honor of speaking with you tonight. Take care.